Hi, I'm uh, Jared Chase. I'm a tutor with Literacy Volunteers of Greater Hartford, which is an adult literacy organization uh, serving about 800 students and also have about 200 volunteer tutors. Literacy is an important issue in Connecticut as it is at the national level. In the Greater Hartford area, for example, there are tens of thousands of adults who do not yet have the literacy skills that they would like to have. At Literacy Volunteers, uh, we help our students to improve their literacy skills in measurable ways, and in the process, we help them to achieve um, many of their employment and civic goals. We're always looking for volunteers. People should not be worried if they don't have a background in education or a foreign language. Um, if you're 18 years old and you're fluent in English, um, you'd be an excellent tutor. It's been an exciting and rewarding experience. Welcome to the nonprofit world where we highlight organizations and individuals passionate about empowering people to make a difference in the lives of others, serving in our community and around the world. I'm Paula Sorrells Bean, your guest host for today. And with me, I have CJ House. She is the uh, Executive Director for Literacy Volunteers of Greater. Uh, Hartford. Welcome, CJ. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for visiting us. You're welcome. So glad to have you with us on the, on the program today. Thank you. So let's just start out by telling our audience a little bit about Literacy Volunteers, um, about the history of the organization, how they got started, and what you do. So Literacy Volunteers of Greater Hartford started back in 1972. Um, we've been around a while. It was a small grassroots organization. A handful of people in Hartford decided that um, what was needed were people to help tutor other um, individuals who couldn't read or write well. Um, and from there, from that small beginning, I think the first year served maybe 100 students. Um, and it was one-on-one, -on -one, people meeting in community centers and churches, uh, homes, wherever. Um, fast forward uh, to today, we serve about 900 students a year. Um, we have two centers, one here in Hartford, one in East Hartford. Uh, we do some one-on-one, -on -one, but we mostly do group tutoring. Um, we provide um, English for speakers of other languages. Um, we provide uh, basic literacy, which are for people who can speak English but who cannot uh, read or write it well. Um, we have citizenship classes, and we have a program called Career Pathways, which um, helps people find jobs, helps low-literate um, individuals find jobs. Um, so. Uh, one of the beautiful things I think about what we do is we are engaging the community in a solution. Um, our, most of our uh, 225 volunteers do, our, do all of our teaching. Um, we have a small staff of 13 uh, professionals um, who are educators, um, most of them. Um, and um, our volunteers are out there uh, connecting um, and teaching with a population um, that actually is, is fairly well hidden, um, particularly in Connecticut. Um, the rate of literacy uh, in the city of Hartford is uh, actually quite astounding. Um, two out of five adults are reading equivalent, lower than a third grade level. Um, so there's our, we are, uh, we um, kind of compete, if you will, with Brownsville, Texas, for being the least literate city in the United States. Um, which is surprising, and as you can imagine, uh, if someone cannot read or write well, or if someone cannot communicate well, uh, along with that goes poverty, goes health issues, uh, obviously employment issues. Um, uh, our first teacher are our parents, and if a parent is unable to read or write well, it's, it is passed down to a child, um, and the best predictor of a child's literacy level is the, is the parent. Um, it's actually mom. Dad, dad plays a second. Um, but it's, it's really mom's literacy level. So, so who is your, um, what, what age group are your students? All of our students are adults. Um, they are all 18 and over. Um, uh, we have students from all over the world. Um, our English uh, for speakers of other languages, um, our ESOL program has, um, 
at last count, I probably 120 different countries. Um, Africa, Asia, South America. Um, any day you walk in, you will hear Portuguese, you'll hear Creole, you'll hear Arabic, um, uh, which is one of the many things that I love about this place. Our basic literacy students, who are students who are learning to read and write, can speak English. Um, some of them uh, dropped out of high school when they were younger. And um, as they uh, grew up and grew out of their younger silly days, um, realized that learning to read and write was important um, and decided to come back. So some of them will be uh, preparing here to go get their high school diploma. Um, a significant portion as well um, are people, sadly, who have graduated high school but who cannot read or write. And um, that is an indication of the K through 12 system doing the best that it can with the resources it has. But um, people certainly still do fall through the cracks. Sure. Are there other organizations in the Hartford area or even in Connecticut that do what you're doing? We work very closely with um, a number of different organizations that, that provide these kinds of services. We are unique in that we are volunteer based mm -hmm. and that our teaching happens um, in very small groups um, and that our teaching ha and that our volunteers are very rigor rigorously trained. Um, but we work very closely, for example, with Hartford Adult Education and East Hartford Adult Education and West Hartford Adult Education, all of the surrounding towns. Um, because the public adult education programs um, also offer uh, ESL, also offer citizenship. Um, typically, their classes are larger. Um, and you know, it's uh, like anything else. A student, whether you're a child or an adult, you need to find a community where a learning community that fits your needs. Um, and so you know, very often, uh, for example, with Hartford Adult Ed, we will prepare students for uh, some of their high school completion programs so that by the time they get to them, um, they can move more rapidly through that program. Um, similarly, if they have a student who's struggling with math, which is everyone struggles with math, <laughs> apparently, um, they may send them to us. Um, yeah, everybody you know, nods their head. Yes, everybody struggles with math. Um, they'll send us to us, and we'll provide some additional tutoring, support uh, uh, for that student so that they can go back into their GED class, which is a high school preparation program, and they can, can you know, pass that math test so they can get their high school diploma. Um, so there are other literacy volunteers throughout the state. Um, there's one in New Britain, New Haven, um, Waterbury. So we are sprinkled around. Um, we are all a little bit different. Um, we are uh, a little bit different in that we have two centers, and we have uh, always had the center-based models. So um, all of our students and our tutors are teaching here on site. Um, I have certified teachers here on site to help them uh, if they get stuck, um, if a teacher needs help in a classroom learning different strategies, and um, there's all kinds of professional development that we do. Um, so we are not doing the kind of typical literacy volunteers model, which is a one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. um, men you know, more mentoring. Right. Are, um, tell me a little bit about your volunteers. Are they professionals? Are they, some of them, school teachers? Where do, what is the background? They of run the gamut. Um, we have everything from students uh, in the latest class. So we just graduated a class of 14 new tutors. Um, some are uh, folks who have retired. Um, we have uh, some IT people. We have some lawyers. We have some, some school teachers, um, doctors, you name it. Um, so trying to find, what, you know, what am I going to do in retirement? How am I going to, to find a, you know, a good place to um, use my skills? Um, two, we have a, a, a young man who is going to go off to the Peace Corps. Um, and so he's um, getting a little bit of experience here. Um, we have a number of young people who have just moved into the Hartford um, area, and they're looking for a community. Um, looking to network with some other folks. So it really does run the gamut. The only uh, requirement, um, we do want people to be 18 and older. Um, they do need to be proficient in English. Um, they do not need to speak a second language. Um, staff speak, amongst us, we speak multiple languages. Um, so that's covered. Um, they do need to go through our training, um, which is fairly rigorous. There's a, an initial training that um, involves student teaching and observations and, uh, and classroom work. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are professional development that they do afterwards. They're an amazing group of people um, and a, a really fun group of people to work with. That's great. That's great. Yes, I was um, so looking at your, your online, uh, your website. 
and uh, saw that you have the, the tutor training and then tutor resources. Yes. So they have ways that they can find out more information and grow themselves right. as well as learning to teach the, um, the others. We are very much a lifelong learning community and I think um, that makes us a little special too. I, as director, feel as committed to providing our students with a rich educational experience as we are to providing the same for our tutors. Um, they are volunteers. Um, what can we provide, you know, kind of paying it forward to them? Um, our volunteers will tell you that they learn more from their students than their students learn from them. Um, but, uh, you know, beyond that uh, connection, um, we want to provide some real education in how do you teach adults. It's very different than teaching children. Um, how do you teach English as a second language? Um, how do you teach someone to read? Um, so we do teach all those strategies, um, and it's constantly. We also have a digital literacy program um, where our, all of our students are uh, involved in digital lit Every week they get a, at least one lesson or two in digital literacy. So they learn how to use a computer. They learn how to go online to uh, find resources for themselves. They learn safe practices online. Um, we found that a lot of our tutors needed the same kind of digital literacy skills. Um, and so uh, we have one tutor, uh, I don't know how old she is, but I know that she is above 80, um, who actually is mastering a comp the computer skills. And um, she's like my inspiration, you know? Uh, so yes, we feel that everyone is, uh, um, is here to learn. Um, it is a unique combination of people. Most of our students, um, oh, they come from all over the world. They come from uh, places where our tutors have probably never been or only been as a tourist. Mm -hmm. um, and they're two very, you know, I think particularly in Connecticut, uh, I find um, we are very socioeconomically separated um, as a community, as a society. Um, uh, people who live in the suburbs don't come into Hartford. Um, and this is a place here at 30 Arbor Street. Um, where Hartford and the suburbs come together. And there's an understanding that happens and a bridge that happens that I think is very valuable for the community as a whole. Um, you know, where, where people who never would have crossed paths before um, sure. and might have even tried to avoid each other right. um, are now sitting in a classroom learning from each other. Um, that's, that's, if that doesn't make a healthy community, I don't know what does. Yeah. You know, that's a, a piece. What, um, what is the cost for students? Is it's free. Um, if they can and want to, um, they can contribute um, to their to their you know forty five dollars maximum. We will not let them contribute any more than that. Um, but it is free. It is free for tutors as well. Um, yeah, we are uh, supported by some very wonderful Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. Um, uh, Farmington Bank, uh, Comcast, uh, a number of corporations, a number of private individuals. So that's how you're funding. funding. That's how you get our your funding. funding. Our funding is um, we do get some funding from the State Department of Education, okay. um, but uh, it really is quite a diverse uh, funding base that we rely on. And I noticed you have a gala coming up. We have a gala coming up March 24th okay. um, out in Farmington. Um, we. Uh, Typically get a couple of hundred people, a little bit more. Um, it is a fun evening. We drink, we eat, we um, listen to two. This year we will have, again, two students who will tell their stories um, of, um, of their life and, and where, how it landed them here and, and where they went from there. It's wonderful. That's great. That's great. Is there a particular success story that you would like to share with us? I would love it if you would um, have an opportunity to speak with one of the students maybe okay. this afternoon and let them tell their own um, story um, because uh, it's, it's so much better coming from, the, yeah. from their mouth. Okay. Um, Great. Wonderful. So is there anything else um, that you would like to share with our audience today, uh, maybe even in particular your uh, website, how people can contact you both to volunteer as well as to um, come here as a, um, as a student. As a student. Our website, uh, lvgh.org, is a wealth of information. Um, if you want to be a student, if you want to be a tutor, it's right there. Um, if you want to read some student stories, um, they are right there to find out where our services are. Um, you can uh, register for the gala. 
Um, and there are also some learning tools um, and some resources. If someone is interested or if someone um, is studying uh, to teach English as a second language or to teach reading and writing, um, we have some really wonderful digital skills, uh, digital, uh, some links up there that um, will we'll help them with that. Wonderful. So I was just going to say, you might want to meet Oka, who is our school dog, um, <laughs> who comes to school every single day. Um, and uh, she's, uh, she's our mascot, and she's also our, uh, our therapy dog <laughs> for, for all of us. And she's newly groomed and beautiful. And she's newly beautiful. groomed and gorgeous. <laughs> um, so CJ, um, there were, there's word that there are some budget cuts. How will those budget cuts affect you? Uh, the challenge of the budget cuts is nobody knows yet. Um, but uh, what we're fortunate is that our funding bases, our funding sources are diverse. Um, we are not reliant on one single funding source. We're not reliant only on the state. Um, so we really have a good mix. Um, we have a great group of people who, who support us and a great group of corporations who support us. So um, we're going to knock wood and hope, hope for the best. Um, but it's certainly uh, uncertain times for every not-for-profit not out there. Yeah. Every not-for-profit. We also do have an endowment. Um, thanks to a, a two, past tutor and a past board member who uh, left us a million dollars uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and we've invested that in an endowment to um, you know, ensure that we can sustain our services and sustain the agency going forward. That's wonderful. You have such a uh, magnificent program here. And, and as we were talking about with Leo, there's, um, there's a lot of educating going on, not just for the students, but for the volunteers and the, and the staff as well. Um, how do you measure success in your program? So our program, whether we're talking about the tutors or about the student, um, it's student-centered. So when a student comes in here, um, uh, they identify what their goals are. What do they want to get out of this program? Um, do they want to get a job? Do they want to go to college? Do they want to be able to read to their child? Um, is it as simple as that? And so all of the programming is really uh, looking at what those goals are. Um, and the curriculum is shaped around what our students want to get out of this program. Um, they set up their goals in the beginning, at the beginning of the term. At the end of the term, we revisit those goals. Did you make them? Did you not make them? What do you need to help you know, so we can help you make them? Um, so there is that portfolio approach. We also um, do use standardized testing. There is an uh, adult uh, literacy test called CASAS. Um, that is a state standard test um, and will demonstrate um, progress in certain specific skills, life, you know, literacy and life skills. Um, so we do use the CASAS testing. Um, there's another standardized test called the DAR that we use. Um, so there are a number of metrics that, that we use to see, uh, are our students making progress? And is our program appropriate? Are we, um, are we doing what we need to do to help them get to their goals? OK, wonderful. Uh, does the outcome, um, in your opinion, meet the objectives of the program? I think um, the fact that about 95 to 100 percent of our students, after a year of classes, achieve at least one or two of the goals that they set for themselves mm -hmm. um, is an ind indication of, of the outcomes of our program. Um, our CASA scores are rising every year. Um, our standardized testing, does that really measure what a student knows, um, particularly when it comes to an adult? Uh, you know, not, not as much, but we still are seeing progress on that line. Um, I think our best measurement is when I see a student who comes in here, um, can't speak a word of English, can't get through the grocery store, um, and, you know, by the end of, of, the, of the year, um, are really much more independent and also thinking about what's my next step? What else can I take on? Um, so, you know, I think in terms of the measurements and in terms of uh, the goals of the students, are they, get, are they being met? Yes. Um, and this is not a mandated program. People come here because they want to be here. So if they are not getting what they need, um, they won't stay. Um, and, uh, and another indication is that our students will uh, get to their goals. You know, so they say they want to go off to college, and they'll, we'll help them uh, apply and get into community college or a training program or four-year college. We've had all of them. Um, they always come back. Um, it's fascinating how uh, we may not hear from them even for two or three years, um, and then they come back and say, hey, this is what I've been doing. This is, you, this is what, you, what you all helped me get to. Oh, that's great. So are you satisfied with the outcomes? I'm 
uh, never satisfied with all of the outcomes um, because we're always pushing the envelope. Um, our Career Pathways program was pushing the envelope. We kept hearing from our students that they really needed help taking that next step. Um, and we didn't have a program in place to make that happen. And uh, that was always something that I, you know, I have been thinking about for a long time. And I'm just so pleased that that program's in place um, and making that happen. Um, so we are, you know, I'm always, uh, uh, anxious and excited to see the next group of students coming in. They'll come in in the fall. Um, what do they want? What do, where do they want to go? And what programs can we shape for them? So um, yeah, I'm really happy with where we are right now, but I'm always looking to, where are we going to go? Yeah. What's next? That's great. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that some will come back, yes. especially because they're coming as volunteers to begin with, and that they'll come back to, to search mm -hmm. for more. Is there a way that you stay connected with students that have been through your program? What's really funny uh, is uh, we thank God every day for social media um, because that uh, is one way that we, we have a database filled with contact information and, um, and we certainly you know call students and follow up with them every three months, whatever it is. But um, it's really fun when you go on Facebook and you see uh, a student who just has some something new happen in their life, whether it's a wedding or a college graduation, um, we really have found that that's a, that's a great tool um, in addition to the reaching out um, constantly. Yeah, yeah. Social media is a wonderful way to. It's a stay wonderful connected. way to stay connected. Yeah. Um, and I'm, you know, dating myself saying Facebook. There's all those other ones out there that I'm not really familiar with, but yeah. my program people are. Yeah, you know? great. Thank you, CJ. All right, I have uh, with me now, I have Katie Reeves, who is the uh, Director of Development and Communications. Uh, welcome, Katie. Thank you. Um, would you tell us a little bit about your role here at Literacy Volunteers of Greater Hartford? Yep, so I um, am in charge of raising funds for our programs, and I do a lot of donor management. I run all the events, um, and I get the word out to the community about who we are and what we do. Wonderful, wonderful. So what kind of um, fundraising activities do you do? Um, so we have two events um, within the year. Our big event is actually coming up in a couple weeks. It's our annual Read, Learn, Grow Gala. So it's a typical fundraiser with silent auction, dinner, dancing. And then we have a smaller event in the fall called Literacy and Libations, which is a happy hour, cocktail hour, after work event that um, a lot of young professionals attend. And it's a good time to meet some students and tutors and just mingle and have a good time. Wonderful. How do you get your silent auction items? It's all um, just sending out letters and calling people and who you know. And um, this year we're doing really well. We have about 195 items so far. Wow. And we still have about three weeks. So we're looking forward to raising even more money this year. Last year our silent auction raised over $20,000. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Any other fundraisers throughout the year or, or just the two? Just the two for events. OK. Wonderful. Any other um, um, ways of getting funds? Um, we do two um, annual appeal letters, one in the fall and one in the spring, that we reach out to our supporters to, if they could um, provide donations to us, as well as we receive grant funding, um, private funding, corporate funding um, that help us sustain our programs. Um, it's very important because we are a nonprofit and all, every dollar helps us keep serving all of our students. Right now we have about 850 students enrolled um, with, with, in the future, seeing it, it growing and growing. So can you Tell me what makes a good fundraiser. Um, somebody who is um, energetic and personable and can accept rejection, for sure. <laughs> um, and somebody who can build um, relationships. That's very important. Because it's also, it's not always about the money. It's also about getting to know the person and, and getting, almost becoming friends with them. What kind of fundraising do you feel like works best? Like, is it, is it the individual giving, um, more so than the gala, or how you know what what is your best way of bringing in funds? Um, trends are leaning towards individual giving. Um, I've actually attended a training a few months back that stated that about eighty six percent of funding received throughout all nonprofits is through individuals, um, which was very shocking for a lot of people because a lot of people think it comes from corporations and through um, grant funding. So it's good to build the relationship with the individual donor and, and hopefully so they can sustain um, giving for a long term. Thank you so much, Katie, for joining us Thank today. Thank you. We appreciate your time. Thank you. And appreciate you being here. So uh, tell us, Leo, what exactly does the Career Pathways Facilitator, uh, what does that entail? What does your job entail? So a few of the things that I do is I meet with students one-on-one -on -one 
to help them figure out what the next step in their process is. So here they come to get their literacy up. They come, some students come as ESOL students to learn how to read and write in English and speak it. Some come as basic literacy, stu basic literacy students. They already speak English, but they're trying to brush up on their skills on reading and writing it. We also offer math classes, citizenship classes, and such things. They come to me when they're ready to either go on to higher education, like a college, Capital Community College, UConn Central, things like that. They come to me when they want to get into a training program, something like a NETS, a CDL training program, um, something like a Prince Tech, where you can get your electrical license, things like that. Or we do resumes. I do mock interviews with them. I literally let the student come to me, and we build what they need to do step by step to get to the goal that they set for themselves. So there's no real, there's no cookie cutter um, process for this. Each student has their own individualized process. Every, every student is individual and their needs are Exactly, are, uh, very, can be very different. different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, how do, uh, do you help them find jobs? Um, yeah, we, we do. I do help them find jobs. I, I try to support my students in a way where the real world would support them. So I try to give them the tools that they can use to help themselves job search. Mm -hmm. So I might start off with job searching with them, saying, OK, you can use sites like Indeed or um, hot, hot Jobs, things of those natures, or um, American Job Center, mm -hmm. um, LinkedIn. So I try to make them familiar with what they can do online to job search. I also let them know about the old school fashion ways where you would go. After you do an interview, you make sure you send a thank you note. You make sure you show up maybe a week later and say, hey, I'm still really interested in this position and I want to know if it's still available and if you're still looking. If not, I thank you for your time. You want to make sure that they're doing that follow up because when you have, when you have a city like Hartford where there's multiple people who need jobs mm -hmm. and multiple people who might not have transportation to leave outside the city limits, and there's only two jobs within the city limit, those, all those people are competing for those two jobs. Mm -hmm. So I try, to make my students, I try to make my students aware on how to make sure they can get at least an interview. Mm -hmm. And that uh, helps them to stand up above exactly. the rest. Um, exactly. I think um, I know that handwritten thank you notes uh, are, are kind of a thing of the past now. Well, if you, not if you're in the South. Uh -huh. But up here, yes, it, it is a thing of the past. You, you're most likely going to be either sending an email, something of that nature, electronic, just because people get so much stuff that it's, it's difficult for, some time, for them to sometimes cipher through things. Mm -hmm. So, Leo, what is your background? What, what makes you um, qualified for the job that you're doing with... Um, uh, with literacy volunteers? So um, I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana. I grew up in the lower ninth ward of New Orleans. Um, very similar to Hartford. It's just a, it's just a bigger city. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I can sort of empathize with some of the students that I work with. I, I know where they're coming from. I know some of the struggles that they have and some of the struggles they face and some of the struggles they're going to face moving forward. Um, I moved to Connecticut when I was about 13. And when I came to Connecticut, uh, I made great friends, realized how important education was and went to school to get my bachelor's in business administration. Where um, did you go? I went to Eastern Connecticut State University okay. in Willimantic. Um, I got my bachelor's in business because I was a business-minded person. I just knew that I would graduate if I majored in business. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I actually met with one of my advisors, and I, was, I started a company, an entertainment company, where I would help um, organizations throw parties. Um, I helped plan President Nunez's inauguration dinner with the males and the females at Eastern Connecticut State University. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, I love this. I love what I'm doing. I like working with these students. And when I met with my advisor, he was like, have you ever heard of higher education? And I was like, no. What is higher education? So he made me do the research on it. And after I did my research, I, find out, I found out that I could be the uh, director of student activities at a college, which is that's all they do is plan events. Um, I applied to UConn, and I applied to Central Connecticut State University. UConn had an administrative track for higher education. And again, I had already have a business background. I didn't, I didn't feel that I needed, the, I needed any more administrative training at that time. But I really, I was intrigued by the counseling side of it. So I went to Central Connecticut State University. I got my master's in student development in higher education, which is a counseling track. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided that I wanted to work with students. The reason I came to Literacy Volunteers at Greater Hartford is because what I'm doing here is very similar to what I was doing out of college. I'm preparing people for the next step. And that's what I love to do.
Wonderful. So what is the, what is the target population? So at Literacy Volunteers, you have to be 18 to be able to come here. Mm -hmm. we're, we're an adult program, so you can't be eligible to be in high school. Um, the majority of the people I work with, I would say, would, would be between their low 30s and up. I don't really work with too many people under 30. Mm -hmm. Most of the people that I work with are 30 plus. Okay. And at 30 plus, are they coming here for the first time to try to um, further their education or to to become more literate? Is that? Oh, it's it's a. They come for a multitude of things. I mean, they come to get their GEDs. They come to. Um, make their resumes better. They come to get practice with mock interviews, like I said. There's many different reasons on why people come to Literacy Volunteers. Mm -hmm. I think that we are a safe haven for people. I think when, when you've been told all your life, when you've been told all your life that you can't achieve something or that you can't do something, it's very difficult to start believing in yourself. And when you come here, that's what we start to do. We start to sort of build you up so that you can know that not everybody is the, faith, the creator of Facebook. Not everybody can be the CEO of Exxon, but everybody has a talent. Every person on the planet has a talent. And once you find that talent and you stick to that talent, you can be successful. And everybody's success is different. You know, People view success as maybe having a big house or a big car. I personally view success as that I feed my kids every day. Mm -hmm. My wife has a roof over her head. That's success to me. What about um, men and women? What, um, what is the population with? I mean, do you have more women, more men? As with all education, I tend to work with more women than men when it comes to the educational side. More women tend to be like, I would like to maybe go to higher education. Um, I do work with a number of men, but most of the men that I work with, their first concern is getting into a job, getting into a field of work, and which is understandable because they're trying to make sure they can take care of their families, and some men are trying to make sure that their significant other can possibly live out a dream of being a nurse or going to get a CDL or becoming a welder. You'll be surprised. Welding is a very big um, market right now for women. That's what I try to push a lot of women into, or I try to convince them that maybe you should pick up that trade because a lot of they need welder, they need men, women that are welders. Okay, so tell me about the, um, the diversity of your population. Um, we have a very diverse population here. I mean, I work with people from West Africa. There's countries like Togo that I've never heard of that now I know where it is. If someone was to ask me where Togo is, I know where it is. Um, we, ha we work with people from the Ukraine, people from China, people from right here in Hartford, um, Puerto Rico, Colombia. I mean, literally, it's a very diverse place. I run a program called the Sodexo program here at LVGH. And in my Sodexo program, you learn how to um, cook food, but in a search safe way. We, we, work, we work at a church in East Hartford with the Sodexo chef that trains our students, and they come here for classes for the Sesersate classes. And we also provide, we also pay for that, that test when they're ready to take that test. Um, I bring that up to mention that we've had Spanish food, we've had Indian food, we've had Jamaican food. I mean, the, diver the diversity of the school is great. Um, and when it comes to the elderly, in terms of the people that I work with, um, <laughs> I, I do work with a lot of, a lot of um, elderly people. I wouldn't call them elderly because I don't even know the number that's elderly, but I do work with a number of older people mm -hmm. that are trying to either change their position, um, come back into the work field, do something part-time because they don't want to be retired anymore. And those type of jobs sometimes can be more difficult because it's a part-time type of thing. And when I'm looking for jobs, I'm really trying to help people get sustainable jobs mm -hmm. and sustainable wages, and most of those jobs are full-time jobs. Do you, have, um, do you have very many, say, 50-plus uh, who are coming in for the first time and saying, I've never learned how to re read, I can't write? Um, do you have any of, any of those? Um, in terms of what I do with the students, sometimes I go, I go and find out what their CASA scores is and what their levels are, and sometimes I don't. But what I do find, for the most part, is that it's more of a technology issue with with the older population. It's more of, oh, I got to email them. They're not going to call me. Or um, how do I know how to check my email? How can I send someone my resume through a cell phone? So those are some of the things that I try to really empower them with. I try to show them that technology is your friend. I personally love technology. It helps us 
keep everything organized. It alerts you when you need to do something. I even have shown some people that you can set up your phone to alert you when you have to take your medication, when you have to go to bed, when the bus comes. These are things that can really help them get their life on a track where they want it to be and be able to still work and do things. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Um, what kind of cultural events do you have uh, through um, literacy volunteers to showcase some of the diversity? One of the things that I love when I first came here is that we do, a, we do like a holiday party mm -hmm. and people get to bring dishes from where they're from. And we've had so many different things. I mean, we've had a lady from Japan make sushi, and I personally love sushi. Um, we have, a late, we have wo women from Africa make things, people from Haiti. The diversity of our, of our uh, students here is wonderful. I mean, not only do I learn a lot from our students, I'm sure they, they appreciate the things that we do here for them, but I don't think they really understand how much we appreciate the things that we learn from them. Because there's plenty of things that I've learned just just by having normal conversations on what the rest of the world is like. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a great place for education all the way around, oh, not just for the, um, the students that come, definitely. but for the volunteers and staff as well. Definitely. That's 100%. wonderful. That is wonderful. Leo, thank you so much for um, taking time to be with us here today. We just uh, thank you and wish you the best. So I have a volunteer with me today. Her name is Gara Brooke. Yes. And I'm so happy to have you with us here. And how did you find out about um, Literacy Volunteers of Greater Hartford? I have a number of colleagues, former colleagues in the corporate world that uh, have retired, have since retired, uh, or part, while they're working have uh, been working here and they said we want you over here great so that's how I uh, became involved and, and how long ago was that uh, at least two years two a years. good two years I retired uh, about uh, two and a half years ago okay From so so um, yeah what what kind of business maybe not necessarily the company you worked for but what kind of business I was in you human in? resources okay yes Wonderful. for much of my career so that yes. kind of blends nicely with coming over here and doing some of the things that, um, sure. that you're doing here. Absolutely, because I was involved in training. Wonderful. Yeah. And you're a tutor? I am a tutor for Serve Pro uh, program here. Uh, and I'm relatively new to it. I started in the fall. And um, I prior to that, I, and I'm doing this again, so I'm teaching two different classes. I'm teaching advanced conversation for uh, uh, folks that English is a sec second language. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. So serve pro program. Right, where they get certified as food handlers. Okay. Yes. Okay, wonderful. All right, I'm here with uh, Chingy. She is a student um, at the uh, Literacy Volunteers of Greater Hartford. And uh, welcome to the nonprofit world. Oh, thank you. And um, we we'll just want to ask you a couple of questions. Where are you from? I'm from Taiwan. From Taiwan. And how long have you been here in the United States? I think two years and a half. Okay. And did you know English before you came to the United States? Um, I, I learned a little in my homeland, so mm -hmm. I, I can speak simple. But actually, I barely spoke English so in my country, so mm -hmm. it's just a, like a new language for me, actually. That's wonderful. Well, you're doing a great job of it. Thank you so yeah. much. So um, what did you study before you came here to the United States? I majored in finance. Mm -hmm. in college in my homeland. But I also try to have a master degree here. And I think this place is really helpful okay. for me. Yeah. So, so um, have you begun your master's program yet? Actually, it already finished. Yeah. OK. Yeah. All right, wonderful. So, so going here, taking classes here, has helped you prepare for that? Yes, of, of course, because I can practice English here and tutors here are very helpful for like uh, to to help help you to uh, to write your resume. They will how to say help you to revise revise okay. your resume and and they can also improve your interview skill. Something Wonderful. like that. So they're very dedicated to help us fit in here, I think. In addition to that, is there anything else that you want to accomplish uh, through your um, going through this program here? Uh, this program? Uh, because I came with my family, so I think this is the only, it's, it's a very precious place for immigrants to practice English. Yes, because uh, when we back home, we still 
speak our uh, native language. So I think here is just like a, a door to the outside world for me, especially for me. Yeah, because when I hear I can speak English and meet American people really, and not just not, not just my, I, I can really uh, move out to my comfortable zone. So, some, something like that. So it's a really important place for me, mm -hmm. yeah, to to get connected with this country, this community. Great. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Chingyi, for joining us today. And we wish you the best in, uh, um, in the program here and then afterwards as well. Oh, thank you so All much. Right. Thank yeah. you so much. So I have with me um, Ida, who is a student here. And um, what I'd like to know, um, Ida, is first of all, where are you from? Mm -hmm. I am from Dominican Republic. So how did you find out about uh, Literacy Volunteers of Greater Hartford? I Google it, uh, how to find some classes free, and they have uh, levels that you can be in different levels. Mm -hmm. So I like that one. Okay. And what in particular are you looking to accomplish here? Uh, the teachers are very engaged. Uh -huh. um, they have a different material they can prepare to class. Uh, they also give you feedback when you are doing something in writing, in speaking, in pronunciation, stuff mm -hmm. like that. So um, is there anything in particular you want to do after you finish uh, taking classes here? I would like to do some volunteer also mm -hmm. to help people that came from other country like me so I can pay back okay. to the world. Did you speak English already before you started taking classes here? A little bit, yeah. A little bit, mm -hmm. but so this has helped you yeah. in that area a lot. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us. It's so nice to have you on the program with thank us. Thank you for your time. We have uh, had the uh, pleasure of visiting with Literacy Volunteers of Greater Hartford. Um, so uh, thank you for uh, being a wonderful audience today. Um, this is Paula Sorrells being for the nonprofit world. assistant director here at Literacy Volunteers of Greater Hartford. Um, our mission is to uh, help Greater Hartford adults learn how to read, write, and speak English. Um, and today we're going to take a tour so that you can see what we're all about here at LVGH. This is Miriam Lopez, our administrative assistant. She's the first smiling face you'll see when you get here. Now I'll introduce you to our executive director, so, CJ House. So my job around here is to make sure that we have the resources to teach the 744 students that we taught this past year, um, to raise the money to make that happen, to make sure that we have good staff in place who are going to train our tutors so that they feel confident in what they're doing. And really my job around here is to make sure everybody has fun doing the really hard work and the good work that we do. The other piece that I do is it's my job to make sure that this is a very diverse community so I make sure that we have um, lots of Yankee fans and we do have at least one Red Sox fan on staff. Misery loves a little company. Thanks CJ. Uh, let's cut through our kitchen now. Um, this is our kitchen that students and tutors can use. Um, they can get some free coffee, keep their lunches here. Um, let's go check out our classroom. Um, we have 10 or 12 uh, small classrooms here at the Hartford Literacy Center. Um, we also have small classes at our other two locations. Um, and now we're going to go talk to our program director, Mark Briggs. He's going to tell us a little bit more about what goes on in those classes. Excuse me, Mark. Oh, yes. Hi. Shannon. Oh, yes. Love to talk to you. 
So my job is to make sure that the students and volunteer tutors have what they need to be successful here at LBGH. Uh, I'm really proud of the learning community that we've been able to build here. Staff and volunteers are really friendly and helpful and I have been really impressed by the drive and determination that um, our students show every day. I think one of the reasons that LVGH is such a great place is because everyone wants to be here, everyone takes the work seriously, and people make real progress toward their, towards their goals. And now we are coming to our student lounge and library area. This is our resource library. Uh, students and tutors are welcome to come and take out materials that they want to use on their own or in class. We have games, books, uh, dictionaries in different languages. Um, some of our citizenship materials are here. And now let's meet our program managers, Paula Beninato and Rose Howard. Hey guys! Working hard. Okay. And now let's go uh, check out our computer lab. We have 20 computers here for students to use uh, anytime they want. Um, here we have Chris Johnson. He's an LBGH board member and he's also a computer lab volunteer. Okay, well, that was the tour of Literacy Volunteers of Greater Hartford. Thank you so much for stopping by to check us out. And uh, if you want to learn more about us, check out our website or give us a call sometime. Thanks so much. Bye! I think one of the things that has to be identified is the pain that a person goes through in a literate problem. Sometimes I, I feel alone, alone, terrible, terrible is, is alone. There's no distinction between intelligence and literacy. You could be illiterate and be a very intelligent person. I can think of a lot of students here who have really special stories. Almost every single one does. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what I was up against, but I, I took the chance, and here I am, and it's been a great experience. I can have my life like I wanted it to, like get my diploma, study hard. I'm learning things that I, I never thought I would learn. I think the difference, too, is in literacy volunteers. The instructors are here as volunteers because they really want to teach you. It's, it's, it's plural. Very good. When I decided that I had some time on my hands and I wanted to volunteer, I realized it was something that I needed to get my hands dirty and get involved with people. I'm here. Oh, this is, for me, is my family. Uh, anyways, so, somebody else working here is very friendly, nice people. I, I love the people here. I feel so good in here because the teacher is like students and we all learn together. Wonderful people just made me feel at ease. Like, hey, Reginald, you could do it. You just need to get your confidence up. You could do it. And that's, that's what I needed. That's all I needed. I learned how to function from a great group of people. Everyone, the teacher was my favorite because the <laughs> it's the same. I'm so happy because I'm here and I study English. It's a nice teacher. Always uh, they like to, to help us. The teachers are friendly and very nice with us. Everyone talks about volunteering in general and that we as volunteers get more out of volunteering than the people who we're helping. And I think that this is one of those places where that is hands down the experience that you will have. They give me support all the time in the personal problem and they're learning English too. And I can't wait to get here, cannot wait. You leave here becoming a real member of society, an individual that can function on their own. And that's what you learn at Literacy. I could have written a check, I could have sent money, I could have done a lot of things to um, help out different organizations. But for me, I needed to see who the people were I was going to be helping. Get on the phone, 
talk to the assistant administrators here and they'll make you feel comfortable. They'll, they'll make it easy for you. That's what they did for me. There's no other organization in our society relating to literacy that can take the place of this organization. I don't know how to put it in words. It's just, it's just been a great experience. The most important is the heart. So the people in here is good heart. Everything here is like, seriously, I say like a dream because it's like too good, too good to be true. I had taught for 37 years and I found myself wondering, what more can I give? And then I heard about literacy volunteer and I said, I can do that. I originally thought that I would do basic literacy. I was thinking I wanted to, you know, just help people learn to read that had, you know, maybe fallen out of the system or whatever. But then when I got here, there was a real need for ESOL teachers. So I said, well, I'll give it a shot. We have students from, you know, Africa, Colombia, from South America. Obviously, we have students from China, India. We have students from various countries. I started out doing this to be a volunteer, but it's I'm getting more, 10 times more back. Um, when I came here, um, I didn't know what to expect. I was nervous when I first got here because I was I went to another school and they told me that I didn't qualify for their program. Um, so they gave me the number for here and I started coming here. Rose has been an influence on me since I first got here. We came in um, a little discouraged, um, lack self-esteem in herself um, because she had been approached by other programs and didn't feel like uh, she was getting the welcoming that she really needed. She always, you know, find me or she always asks me how am I doing or where I'm at. I try to make her comfortable and encourage her that if this is a goal that she set for herself, she should go for it. I spend a lot of time meeting people from all over the world and really learning about them and hearing about their their life journey. They're hardworking people that want to become of this part of this culture. And the more you hear about that and the more you um, get the, the, that experience, you see not only are you making an impact on them, but how much you're learning from them. It's a tremendous learning community here. I can't think of the 10 years that I've been here that I can't say that that isn't just typical. This is like a whole family that I would never put a change. It's like a good feeling every time I come to the door, I say good morning, everybody, everybody knows you. And it's really, really fun.